I did a pre-scripted book review for this book a few months back. I actually wrote the script for that about a year ago. I wrote that for something else and then I adapted that to fit this channel. But I revisited this book and I have some more thoughts on it. In that past review, I focused a lot on the environment of the time. I focused on the feeling of growing up in a time where there's nothing exciting to do, where all the mountains had already been climbed. And now I'm going to hone in on another aspect. I'm going to hone in on the dichotomy between believing that humans are the trash of the world. Tyler, of course, says or writes something to that effect multiple times throughout the book. But the scene that sticks with me is the space monkey looking at himself in the mirror and reciting Tyler's lines. Something like, I am the all-seeing, all-knowing trash of this world, something like that. But the thing that got me thinking about this dichotomy is, at the very end of this book, the conversation that the protagonist has with that shrink at the hospital, that psych ward employee, where the guy at the psych ward is trying to tell him that humans are all special and unique and individual. And it would seem at first glance that that is the complete opposite end of the spectrum from believing that humans are the filth of the world. But I'll take it even further. Christianity asserts that there is a bit of God inside every person. Now, what are the consequences of each of these ways of thinking? What are the moral and philosophical implications of each of these? Well, if you believe humans are worthless and life is worthless, then suddenly it's not that bad to serve tainted food in a service job. Suddenly it's not that bad to steal and to destroy other people's things. And suddenly it's not even that bad to kill someone. However, looking at the flip side of the coin, if there is a piece of God inside everyone, if we're obligated to treat every person as a holy, sacred human being, then that means treating other people kindly does matter. It matters so much, in fact, that it's not out of the question to make that your whole purpose behind life. One could easily make serving others their entire life mission, and a lot of people do look at how many nonprofits have so many employees working at them. People with high-minded ideals, people who want to go out and make the world a better place for other people, not just for themselves. And I'll even take it one step further. I will say that humans are social creatures. I will say that evolution has programmed us to not feel whole unless we are doing something meaningful for other people. And after all, even in an ideology described in this book that seeks the destruction of everything around it, what's the end goal? They're trying to purify the world. And then the next logical question, who are they doing it for? You could easily say they're doing it for themselves, and you might be right. Or maybe they're doing it for nobody in particular. They're just disgusted by the current state of things. That one is probably more accurate to Tyler and the protagonist. But is it really such a leap of faith to say that they're doing it for their children or their community? This book is not only about the environment where this type of cult-like group can spring up. Not only about the type of environment that they can easily recruit in. This book is about looking for meaning in the act of of destroying yourself and destroying everybody else around you, rather than looking for meaning in building up yourself and building up everyone else around you.